So this is the cow housing facilities, Emma. Yeah, is it? so just outdoor cubicles uh, with plans to roof them as soon as possible. But uh, yeah, so 400 cubicles outside uh, and we're using the easy fix mats um, under the cow and we find it very successful. Cows are, cows are very healthy and things outside. Uh, we find there's no real bacteria build up with, you know, rainwater constantly rinsing things off. Um, I suppose you just have to manage your your um, waste disposal. Um, it's probably a lot of rainwater filling up the sated tanks. Um, but other than that, um, the cows do very well out here. I suppose the, the crossbred cow enjoys being outside. Um, they're you know they're built for grazing and that. And that but okay. uh, there is plans to um, put a roof on it as soon as possible. Very good. And see the tanks themselves, Emma. Is it just all a slatted tank you have, or have you in other storage areas for um, slurry storage? Yeah. So uh, we have the slat tanks, obviously, and then the other side of the parlour, we also have a slurry tower. Okay. Um, so that you know that can hold you know what anything that we produce and more. So there's no, um, we're not under any pressure to store the waste. Very good. I can see for the the cleaning down the passageways, Emma, is it an automatic scraper or what do you what what have you? Yeah, so you can see the, the rope, so it's an Alfco rope scraper that we have across um across all of the cubicles, the four pens and we can run them every hour. You can kinda of choose or you can just you know, if there's if the they're stocked less and you don't need to run them all the time, you can you know, you can change it up. But generally when the cows are in here the scrapers go on the hour every hour. And that keeps it um that keeps it clean very good and the cubicles then am i do you put anything on the cubicles bed say like when it's outside like is there a need for it or um generally not a need for it but um maybe in the in the early spring if you weren't able to get out grazing um you know that might be you know might be a good idea to put out lime but i suppose you have to you have to kind of take the weather into account too you know if it's raining then you know the lime isn't really going to get to do its job but uh, we did look into uh, different ideas like a liquid a liquid disinfectant instead, you know, talking to the vets about what our options were, but um, we actually didn't have any issues and, you know, mastitis cases were very minimal, so um, I suppose there was no real need to take any further action. I suppose yeah. the biggest thing is to keep them sp scraped off twice a day, maybe three times a day. Uh, I suppose you'd, when you'd be in through the dry cows anyway, looking for springers, it's very easy to just bring a scraper with you and keep them cleaned off. And I think that keeping the mats clean is um, nearly as effective as, as any disinfectant or similar. Very good. I can see with regards to the health of the animal, Emma, had you any issues with pneumonia, respiratory diseases, say during the bad weather or anything like that? No, I suppose here in the Midlands, we didn't get the weather too extreme um, compared to maybe up north and down south. but. Um, no, like we would have had, you know, heavy rain some days, but the crossbred cow um, are completely unfazed by it. Um, I suppose you might have to take into account you'd be feeding maybe a little bit extra silage um, just to uh, counteract maybe the extra energy that they might be outputting. Um, feed, we can feed out nuts here on the feed passage as well, um, but we didn't encounter any, any major issues. So I. Um, Having having um, experienced outdoor accommodation for such a long time here, I can definitely um, vouch that they're they're a success. But I know from a from an animal welfare perspective, I suppose you have to think ahead for maybe really extreme winters, like I suppose the winter of 2018. If we were to experience something like that again, then it's a uh, I suppose it's non-negotiable that you do need the the roofing overhead or else. Um, maybe need to look at putting the cows into a shed um, in weather like that but we've been very lucky and the cows have been flying it thank god very good and see so just before calving i would do the cows stay out here uh, up right up to calving or i have the are they separated out or what way do you work that yeah so we actually have four um springing pens and they're straw bedded so once cows are um fairly fast approaching their calving date uh, we'll walk through them a couple of times a day and mark up springing cows, pull them out and um, they generally won't be, won't be down there for too long, maybe a couple of days, maybe a week. Uh, maybe some, sometimes heifers, you'll be watching them a bit more closely and you might have them pulled out a bit earlier. Um, heifers do tend to flag up uh, for a while before they calve, so it can be harder to pinpoint um, you know, when they're going to calve by looking at them. But I suppose 
you know, by training your eye and by using the accurate calving dates that you've got from scanning, you're able to have a fair idea of when a cow is going to calve. And um, yeah, I think it's important not to pull them out too early because cows do tend to get fat. Um, yep. And when the condition score is too high coming up to calving like that, um, that can cause more problems um, for you than I suppose the cow being thin, like neither um, neither occurrence is good, but um, we're, t we're always trying to, you know, have a, have a good look through the cows and maybe do a body condition score every couple of months, just to make sure that cows are at the right um, condition score, whether they need extra feed or, you know, whether they need to be cut back a little bit just to be calving down yeah. without having too much difficulty uh, or, yeah, I suppose if they're not in the shed too long, you know, they don't have the they're probably less chance that they'll um, be packing on condition like that. Very good. I see within the shed, see the layout here, Matt, you, you have um, the facilities to kind of batch them off according to kind of body condition score as well. Do yeah. You? Yeah. So there's four, there's kind of four main pens, uh, 100 cubicles in each. So there's 25 cubicles in each, in each row. Um, so we, we, th we did there in the back end uh, have a few that were um, a little on the thin side, um, very marginal, but uh, I suppose when you have the option and you have the infrastructure to be able to batch them off, uh, we did have, I think there might have been maybe 10 or 12 cows, so we had them in uh, one section and we're giving them just a splash of nuts and that did, um, that did the job, you know, within a week or two they were back up to where we needed them to be. Very good. Um, and then similarly, I suppose if you did have um, cows that were too high, you could, you know, batch them off and ensure that they were only eating, you know, as much as they needed. Because I suppose when they're in a sea of 400, you can't, it's hard to monitor how much each cow is eaten without, yeah. um, maybe I suppose if you looked into having the collars and things to to keep an eye on cows' rumination and stuff. But um, at the moment, you're just um, using your own experience and and using what we have to make sure that cows are um, getting enough enough food to um, to be maintained and to do well without overfeeding them or underfeeding them. Very good. I say just the feeding area then Emma, is it all around the outside they're fed is it? Um, the feed barriers? Yeah, so there's four feed faces. Um, generally we, we, um, we might only need to feed on three of them uh, putting out silage, like they're, you know, depending on the how many cows are in and what stage of the year it is and and what their demand is but uh, there is the option to feed on all four feed faces so um, okay. that's a big plus there's no competition for feed then if you're um, if you're feeding out on all four you know every cow has a, has a chance to um, fill her belly okay and is it just silage feed for the winter Emma is it or is it um, mix the rations and minerals or what way do you work that yeah generally just just silage is um, you know the silage is all tested to ensure that it's got the right nutrient content to meet the demand of the cows um, and then if yeah if you had a bad year with the silage being poor um like last year we did um top them up with a bit of dry cow nuts on top of the silage um just to make sure that they were getting everything they needed and, and minerals wise as well and um, whereas this year um, we had a good bank of better quality silage so there was no need for any additional feeding um, but once cows go down into the springing pen they do get nuts, um, but it's only it's it's more so for the minerals than anything. Like they get silage as well, and then you know for the most of the herd um, as a whole, we just add minerals on top of the silage, um, just by hand. So uh, we know that cows are getting the mineral intake they need um, that way. So I suppose Very it's good. it's simple and quick. Um, yeah. I know there's lots of more modern ways coming about now. You can add it into your water troughs. Um, and you know you could feed it out um, through a TMR but we actually we don't have a dye feeder at the moment so we're just um, we're just adding it on top of silage and it works fine um, very just, good and yeah. then say with regards to feeding the silage Emma is it morning and evening silage is fed or what way do you work the feeding routine say in the winter yeah so I suppose uh, generally feed out in the morning and put out enough for the day and then in the evening time you'd come back and just push it into them um, but yeah, I suppose just for I suppose just for efficiency, um, we just do the job once in the morning, and then if you if you come by after lunch and you think they're going to need more to see them through the night, um, we let out more. But um, generally, once um, we feed out, and that kind of does them for the day, and then fresh fresh silage next morning. Then 
very good and I just see here Emma down here as well you have the water shocks is um are they all on the outside Emma or yeah there's so well there's some of them in throughout the cubicles as well so okay. there's you know there's a couple in every pen so that there's no never any any competition for water so they go, run along the end and at yeah. the far end as well and then we have them through the middle as well very good and I just see here Emma you can actually open it for cleaning out the chocks yeah so you can open it out every few days if you want to just replenish the water just to make sure the cows aren't drinking stale water or anything and um, you can just replenish it and it'll fill back up itself so you know five minutes you could yeah you could run around and make sure there was no cow dung had gotten into the trough or you could give a quick brush uh, we do try to run around and do that once a week when the cows are in the cubicles and just give a quick brush off um, to the empty trough and allow it to fill back up again with fresh water. Very good, Emma. So the, this is your overground tower and it's you, you pump from the slatted tank above down here, is it? Yeah, so this is the tower here. So okay. holds, what, size, um, um, what size tank is it? Yeah, so it's about 1.25 million litres is what it holds. Um, so there's a Connell, our, he's our student from GMIT, so he might tell you a bit more about it. Yeah, um, we uh, got our own agitator there this year and it hooks up to the, on the tractor and we were able to pipe it down from the bottom of the collecting yard where, where the, um, the scrapers push it down there and we pump it into the tower. Normally during the winter when it's raining and with no shed over the cubicles we have to pump it down every week or that there does be a lot of water collected. So. It's a full time time job trying to do that. So. Very good. So it's it's quite efficient when pumping down so kind of is it? Yeah, it's it's very good. Like we're able to agitate it and pump it at the same time, so you're saving a lot of time that way and you don't have to get a contractor in because last year we'd get the contractor in and it's just extra money going out that doesn't need when you can do it yourself. So very good, yeah. I'm mean, so spreading of the slurry then. Um, I'm in Connell, do you do the slurry and stuff yourselves as well? Uh, or no, that's, you, is that that's contracted, contracted out? Yeah, we have Francis Turl contra is contractor for that and he has a big umbilical system and he pumps all that out himself and that's, yeah, that's contracted out. We don't need to spread. Very good, yeah.